Hello and welcome to Colorado Mountain College. Uh, my name is Joseph Police and I'm going to be your online math teacher this semester. Um, this class that you're in is a part of the School of Transitional Education. Uh, this is often called developmental education as well. Um, but this is, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that is uh, in the next couple of minutes. Um, but I just want to introduce myself. Um, again, my name is Joseph Police, uh, and this is a video about the online course orientation. So I'm going to teach you how to be a student in this class, kind of the expectations of, um, you know, how to do homework, how to take notes, how to, uh, you know, how I'm going to grade you and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to go over the syllabus in this, in this video as well. Um, and so, uh, you know, a little bit about me. I'm a high school math teacher in Frisco, Colorado. Uh, I'm an adjunct CMC professor, so um, I teach uh, Math 050 and Math 055, and then um, I do a lot of concurrent enrollment for the high school that I teach at. Um, the, the reason I am a teacher at the school that I'm a teacher at is uh, because I specialize in flipped, blended, and online, er and online learning. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit more about why I teach this way and, um, you know, how, why it's so powerful and how you can become a better student from it. So uh, we'll see in a bit. Okay, so just wanted to uh, uh, talk to you guys a little bit about the, uh, the School of Transitional Education. Um, this this uh, school is also called the uh, School of Developmental Education. And so the point of this class and these classes that are in this part of uh, Colorado Mountain College is to prepare you for college-level courses and your degree requirements, okay? And so, um, you know, one thing that you have to understand is that even though um, you are in college, um, these courses are preparing you for college level, okay? So what these courses do is they provide you the additional skills that you're going to need for college level courses. Um, you were probably placed in this class based by an AccuPlacer score or, so, or, or some sort of standardized test score like an SAT, okay? And, and the difference between the School of Transitional Education or, De or DevEd um, and your normal CMC classes is that the credits for this class count towards your GPA only and not your degree. It can sometimes be part of like an admission into your degree. Um, I know for like nursing, for example, uh, you need Math 055 in, in order to get into the nursing program. And I think that you're done with classes. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I want you guys to do is talk to your guys, talk to your advisor about what math classes you need for your degree, okay? Um, and that's really important that you have a clear picture as to what you need to take. Um, and, uh, and make sure that, you know, when you take a math class, so, you know, right now it's, you know, whatever semester it is, you should be making sure that you are taking a math class the next following semester, okay? Because right now, when you're in this class, it's going to be fresh, all right? You want to make sure that by the next time that you can take, the next opportunity you can take a class, that you're taking a math class. And you want to keep that ball rolling because if you take a semester off or you take a year off, you're not going to remember everything that was taught to you in the class that you're currently in. So it's really important that you talk to your advisor about that and you knock these credits out. Um, the other thing that I do want to mention about this, uh, sorry that I'm going, uh, you know, top to bottom to top here, uh, is the fail. If you were to fail or withdraw from this course, this can affect financial aid. So if you are receiving financial aid, um, you do need to be aware that if you do end up failing this class or uh, you withdraw for whatever reason, um, that you want to make sure that that doesn't affect your financial aid. Okay, and so. Um, what we call that is the Satisfactory Academic Proce Progress, or SAP. Um, and you're going to want to talk to your uh, financial aid advisor about that if you have any questions. So um, I just wanted to make sure, you know, the portion of this video, guys, is to make sure that you understand what kind of credit you're getting in this class and how that plays a role in your degree. Everyone's going to be different, okay? So it's something that you got to talk to your advisor about, um, and make sure that you're, you know, in the right place. There's nothing wrong with being in this class, okay? 
simply what it says is that we need to, you know, give you some more skills in order to take those college level courses, even though you are in college, okay? But we want to make sure that um, before you start taking those college level courses, that you have the necessary skills to be successful in those courses, okay? All right. All right, so um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what uh, flipped, blended, and online learning is. And before I do that, I want to tell you a little story. Um, in the summer of 2012, um, at the high school I used to work at in Kansas City, um, the, uh, they, they wanted me to teach calculus, okay? And before I taught calculus, I had to go and brush up on my trigonometry, which is like an aspect of math that you kind of have to know before you do calculus. Um, and so, you know, I hadn't done trigonometry in about, you know, eight years. And so I went back to brush up and I did what I normally would do is I would get the book and I started reading the book. Now, um, I had about two weeks to brush up on all of my trigonometry. And what happened was, is that I, uh, you know, without, within about, you know, I probably read the book for about two hours. I got through one page and I had more questions than I had answers to. And I got really frustrated and I had about a hundred pages to get through of material. And I'm thinking to myself, this is, this is going to take way too long. Um, you know, I don't have any other resources, but then what I decided to do, uh, to try to answer some of my questions, um, I went to YouTube and I typed in trigonometry and what happened was, is I had a list of videos that popped up and I watched videos for about another two hours and I was able to brush up on all of my trigonometry in two hours. So what I thought about when I just, I, I said, look, it took me two hours to brush up on something via video versus something that would have taken me weeks, maybe months to do via book. And so I had this idea. Now, I'm not the first person to have this idea, but it's the concept of using videos to learn, okay? And um, I embarked on this thing called the flipped classroom. Uh, since I've moved to Colorado uh, and working at a... Uh, school that we, you know, use a lot of this stuff, I started doing a lot of things like uh, blended learning and all that. So they're all kind of similar. Um, but what you guys are really going to be focusing on right now is the online learning aspect. And so what I've done is I have taken the concept of the flipped classroom and blended learning, and I've turned it uh, and made that into a cool like form of online learning. So you know, one of the cool things about the the uh, the ability to learn via video is that this becomes a very, very personalized learning experience for you. I want you to think back to the last math class that you were ever in. And I want you to think about what happened when the teacher was up at the board teaching. And when they were up at the board teaching, um, you know, you probably understood what they were doing and you, you were able to follow along, maybe you had some questions here and there. But then, you know, Flip, flip forward five to six hours and all of a sudden it's time for you to do the homework and you're looking at a set of notes and you're looking at the book and you're wondering to yourself, what am I supposed to do? Now, when the teacher did it, it was really easy. But now that I'm doing it on my own, it's really hard. And I always had this problem growing up. I, I was this type of math student and I would, I would come home and I'd start working on, on math and I'd be like, wait a second, I don't know what I'm doing. And then I wouldn't do anything, and I'd go to class the next day, and I'd be like, hey, I don't understand what I was supposed to do last night. And that was a problem, because I wasn't using my time efficiently, and, um, and I wasn't learning to the best of my ability. And so what I realized was, you know, I, I often, at the time, <laughs> sat there and said, what if I had a video that explained how to do this, so that when I was stuck, I could go back and rewatch that video to brush up on what I was doing. So... Um, you know, that's the type of, you know, math student that I was in this concept of using videos to learn really, really, really helps that type of learner, which I think is almost everybody. Okay. Um, so the cool thing about this is that this becomes very personalized. You have the ability to stop, pause, rewind, uh, speed up, slow down the video so that you can learn at your own pace. And so it's self-paced, okay? So you're not gonna be sitting there in class saying, hey, I don't wanna raise my hand and ask a question because 
you know, I don't want to slow the class down. You can go at your own pace. You can do whatever you want, okay? So the cool other thing, you know, is the convenience of this, is that you can do this class on your own time, and you can do it anywhere that you have an internet connection, okay? Which is one of the really cool things about online learning. But the most important thing that you have to do is you must learn how to be a student in this type of class, okay? And we're going to learn how to do that here in a second. So uh, sit back, and uh, what I want you guys to do is to get out that uh, the syllabus and note packet that I... Um, that is on the uh, syllabus orientation assignment. I want you to make sure you have that printed out. We're gonna go over how to take notes and how to be a student in this online class in the next part of the video. All right, so uh, in this portion of the video, I wanna talk to you guys um, a little bit about how to take notes. Um, and so what I want you to notice is that this page here that you see matches what you guys have uh, printed out from the syllabus orientation uh, PDF that's on Canvas. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to um, talk about how to take notes. All right. So uh, I'm going to write um, on this part of the paper. And what I want you guys to do is to follow along and write down what I write down. OK. And the purpose of this, uh, how this class works, uh, is we're going to practice taking notes. All right, and that's our objective for this. All right, so we're going to talk about various things about this class, um, but this is kind of the practice on how to take notes. Um, and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start this. So the purpose of the videos, okay, now the purpose of the videos, guys, is that we want to learn from the videos. Oops. From the videos. OK? That's the point of them, all right? And that's where you guys are going to do the majority of your learning. Now, when we, uh, you know, the, the, your way to access the videos, so these are accessible. So you can access them on Canvas, OK? Or you can access them on YouTube as well, OK? Um, and the important thing is that we learn from the videos. Okay, I can't stress that enough, that you learn. This is where you learn from learning this class. So you learn from the videos, okay? And this is very important that we understand that, okay? So very important that we understand that that's where we are learning, okay? Um, and the cool thing about having videos and learning from the videos is you have the ability to pause, rewind, speed up, or slow down the videos. Okay, and that's a feature that's on you know on YouTube is that you have the ability to. Uh, pause, rewind, speed up, slow down, uh, anything. So if you feel like, hey, I know this pretty well, um, you know, I can go through this at a pretty fast pace, that's fine. Uh, if you want to slow down the video to have it like make more sense so that you have more time to write, that's cool too. Cool thing is, is that you can pause, you can rewind, and, you know, go back through. All right. The other thing about the purpose of the videos is that, you know, there isn't a designated time that this class meets. So you have to create time. So where is the time that you're going to, you know, utilize uh, the videos? You have to make time for this class, okay? Um, and, and that's important, okay? Now, right now, this is a five-credit hour course, okay? And what's recommended is that, you know, for a five-credit hour course, that you... Um, spend for every credit hour of courses that you're taking that you're spending two to three hours per credit hour working outside of class so what that means basically for this class the recommended time is anywhere from 10 to 15 hours per week okay now i'm going to be pretty real with you guys um 
this is pretty this is the most important thing about the class is that you find the time to do this per week if you don't this class will be a struggle okay this class takes time learning math takes time okay it's not something that you're going to hear once and simply absorb you need to practice you need to do homework you need to watch the videos it is going to take time this is only recommended okay i've known people that can do you know spend probably a little bit less than this i've seen students that have spent more time than this per week but the bottom line is is that you have to spend a certain amount of time doing this class otherwise it's going to be a struggle okay now if you do spend this amount of time per week on this class that's something then you'll then you you will be fine okay if you spend time and you're working and you're following all the directions i give you you're going to be fine but i just want to make sure that that i have this information out there and that that's the expectation is that you are doing this on your own okay all right the other cool thing about the videos is that you can go back and rewatch okay so you know there are times where we will have an opportunity to meet virtually but you have the ability to rewatch the videos okay so that if you have a question and you're going hey i've got all day to work on this i can't meet with uh with joe for a while um then you know you have the ability to go back and rewatch those videos okay now the next thing i want to talk about is how to take notes okay um taking notes is a very uh difficult skill to learn okay um oftentimes i remember you know when i would take notes i would you know go through them i would take notes write everything down the teacher says and then when i went back to uh you know to go look at my notes to see if they could help me answer a question oftentimes i'd look at my notes and i'd have no idea what you know the teacher would say okay so it's really important that we know how to take notes because you know the point of taking notes is that you learn from your notes okay so all right first of all okay strategies for taking notes is you want to write down write down everything write down everything that the teacher writes okay that the teacher writes okay that's the first thing okay so you want to write those things down okay but the biggest important thing about notes is that you want to make sure that you understand the notes okay that is the biggest aspect of this understand your notes okay because if you don't understand your notes well then what are you doing why are you writing notes okay there's like no point okay so um the other tactic about taking notes and making sure that you understand what you're doing is that sometimes you may want to write down what the teacher says but doesn't write. Okay, and that's important because you know, there are times when I'll be explaining a concept and I'll be, you know, describing that concept and you'll want to, you know, maybe jot down some of those things that I'm saying, okay? Uh another tactic for taking good notes is writing down step-by-step -step instructions. So write down step by step instructions on how to do things. Okay? All right. Um the other thing that you can do is let's say you're stuck on something uh while you're, you know, watching a video, you should also be writing down questions you have. And those are that's a really good tactic, okay? Uh writing down questions you have. 
And sometimes I will answer those questions in the video. Sometimes I may not, okay? And so those are things that you can, um, you know, often, you know, after the video say, hey, I got a question, I don't understand this aspect of, you know, the video. And that's totally normal and that's totally fine, but it's important you write those things down. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about on how to take notes is that you will have to turn these in for a grade. So you will turn in for a grade. Okay, and that's really important that we do this because I do take a grade on this. Okay, all right, and so let's kind of talk about that. Um, and uh, let's, you know, talk how to do homework and turn it in. So, um, you know, we'll turn homework the same way in as we turn in notes, and I'll talk about that. But uh, the one thing I want to talk about here is that homework um, is due weekly. Um, on Thursdays, at 11.59 p.m., okay? So homework and your notes uh, and all the things uh, that are due for the week are due on Thursdays at 11.59 p.m., okay? Um, I do accept late work, um, but, you know, i got to keep some sort of, like, schedule. And so Thursdays at midnight is uh, the time at which I expect things to be done. Um, I know you guys have lives. I know that you may take a day or two to get those in. But it's really important that we try to get those in Thursdays at, at midnight, okay? So uh, let's talk about how to do homework. Um, first things first, homework is done out of the book, okay? Um, homework is done out of the book, all right? So make sure that you get the book, and, uh, you know, we'll talk about that with that information's in your syllabus with the ISBN number and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's important that we get that uh, purchased here soon. Um, and that information can also be found online um, on Basecamp. So um, it, homework is also done on notebook paper or some sort of paper, okay? All right. Um, and you will, but the, you know, the, the difference is, is that you will turn this in online, okay? So you'll turn it in on Canvas. So turn in online on Canvas, okay? And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and what I want you to do uh, for that in order to turn it in online is you'd want to scan this in. So scan in as a PDF, okay? And that's how you'll turn those in. Um, there are apps on the phone that you can use to scan those in. Um, you know, there are, you know, like Tiny Scanner and things like that. But the other, um, you know, the, the other main scanner that you can use is simply, if you have an iPhone, you can use the Notes app um, through, uh, and you can scan in PDFs that way, okay? Um, now, we're doing homework. Um, the One of the things that you'll have to do is check your answers, okay? So how to check your answers. Um, and what I will I'll provide with you guys are the solutions. So solutions um, to the homework will be online. So solutions are posted online. Okay. Um, and so, you know, the, you know, it's important that you check your answers. Okay. So when you're, you know, doing your homework, you know, one of the things that you'd want to do is you want to sit there and, and the first question that you want to ask yourself is, um, am I correct? Okay, so the first question you'd ask yourself is, am I correct? All right, when you're checking your work, okay? Um, and then the second question you'd want to ask yourself is, let me write this down, second question is, um, is my work correct? So does the work that I have or my logic match what the teacher has. So is the work correct? All right. And that's really important. You know, it's important that you, you know, to get from point A to point B, is your work logical? Is it correct? Okay. All right. So uh, the other thing is, is that if you're wrong, 
Okay, so if you get a question wrong, so if you're wrong, all right, um, can you explain the step, can you explain the teacher's step-by-step -step process? Okay, can you explain the step by step process um, on the solutions okay and and that's kind of a, a unique um, can you okay so let me put a question mark here okay I, I want to talk about that for just a quick minute here okay so when you're checking your solutions okay um, if you're wrong Okay, so let's say you're doing homework and you get something wrong. Can you go through my work and go step by step and understand what I did from step to step? When you can do that and you understand that flow of my work, that is a way to learn math. Okay, and that's something that you guys have to do on your own. So the solutions... The answers can help you understand how to do the problems, okay? Now, the important thing is, um, is that you don't just simply copy, okay? So that you, all right, so do not copy, all right? You will not learn anything from simply copying answers online, okay? The point of this is that you want to use the solutions for understanding, Okay, these are a tool, all right? Use solutions for understanding, okay? Not to simply copy. And there's a reason why I'm doing this, okay? And this is one of the cool things that's going to help you learn in this class. And it's the most important part of this class is that you are going to record yourself doing math, okay? And this is the most important part of the course, all right, so this is the most important part of the course. All right, and this is where you're going to do the most learning, okay? Um, so let's talk about what my expectations are for this, okay? Um, the important thing is um, when you record yourself doing math, okay, um, you're going, I want to hear your voice and see you write. Much like how you're seeing this now, okay? Um, you know, you, you don't see my, you don't see my face on this, but you can hear my voice and you can see what I'm writing. Okay. So that is the, I have to, I have to have that. Okay. Um, this is a must. Um, if I don't see what you are writing down as you're saying it, I, I can't grade that. Okay. I have to really see what you write and hear your voice. Okay. Um, now, in order to record yourself, you have to choose a method of recording. Uh, so choose a method of recording that works for you, okay? Um, so choose a method of recording. Now, what I use, guys, is I use an iPad, and I use a software called Explain Everything. Now, I had to buy the iPad, and I had to pay for the software, so, um, you know, the, the, the key to this is, is I don't want you to go out and have to do exactly what I'm doing. Uh, if you have an iPad and you have a stylus and you're capable of doing that and, and, and uploading those videos into Canvas, then that's great. Um, but, you know, let's kind of think of like some options that you can use. Uh, you can use a tablet, all right, and you can write on it just like how I'm doing you can use a phone, okay? And what I mean by that is you could hold your phone up, all right, hold the phone up uh, so that 
and 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 show your to show your writing. Hold the phone up, and then show your writing. Okay, uh, that's probably the most preferred way. I feel like um, you know this method here is probably the best um, because you guys all have phones. Okay, um, and that's a pretty easy thing to do. Okay. Um, the other thing that you can do is use your computer. Okay, your computer. Oops. Okay, your computer has a webcam. Okay, so you can use your webcam and a whiteboard. Um, and what I'm noticing is that some of you guys already have, um, you know, have already taken one of my classes. And you're familiar with that process, okay? So you can use a webcam on your computer and a whiteboard and write on that. Okay. Um, and so, but, you know, the, the main thing is, if you're going to use your webcam and a whiteboard, the important thing is, is that I need to see you write. So, um, and hear your voice. It may be awkward. It may take a little bit of getting used to. But those are some ways um, that I want you to do. So, you know, be aware that this may take time to troubleshoot, okay? This may take time to troubleshoot, all right? Especially with, um, you know, uploading the videos into Canvas, okay? And we'll talk about, like, file size and all that kind of stuff. Okay, the other thing is, is you're probably sitting there going, all right, taking a math class online is very different. Okay, how do you ask for help in an online setting? Okay, uh, and the cool thing is, is that every week I hold virtual office hours. Depending on what class you're in, um, you know, there is a set time per week that I can do that. So um, if you're, I have to, I'll, label that uh, in the next part of the video, depending on if you're in math 050 or 055. Um, so virtual office hours, and this is done through WebEx. So the cool thing is, is that, um, you know, CMC, so done through, um, this program called WebEx. And what it does, uh, you know, I basically sit in front of my computer uh, I have my webcam on me, and you guys will log in. I'll be able to see your face or hear your voice, and then you will be able to see. I'll be able to plug in my iPad, and I'll be able to actually write in real time, and we can have a conversation, and I can go over stuff with you in real time. Okay, so um, pretty cool thing that we have. So virtual office hours, utilize them. Okay, um, and so let me let's just write down that we can. We can talk in real time. Okay. Um, I can instruct in real time. So I can instruct in real time. Okay. And that's pretty powerful. So if you're sitting there and you're like, hey, I got a question, and it's over just, you know, you know, something pretty quick and easy, I can write on the iPad and we can have a conversation, and it's pretty cool. The other thing that you can do is, um, well, in here, let's talk about those virtual office hours. Those happen uh, typically between 6 and 8 p.m., um, Monday through Thursday. Um, Oh, 6 to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. Um, depending on what class you're in, um, you know, it won't be every day. But, um, you know, so like one class will run Monday and Wednesday. The other class uh, that I teach will run Tuesdays and Thursdays, okay? So um, I can't remember which one's which, but um, so it's only going to be two days a week that I'll hold this, okay? If those times don't work for you, you can schedule a time, okay? I am rather flexible. Um, you know, if there is a time, you know, say early, early, early in the morning uh, or directly after school, um, you know, that's a time that we can, you know, meet 
if that works for you. If 6 to 8 p.m. is like absolutely no, not happening, let me know. OK, if you want to get together, we can get together. All right. But um, we, you have to make sure that you schedule that time with me uh, and make sure it works. OK, I do have a life, believe it or not. And, um, you know, I do things outside of working. Uh, you know, I have a full time job, guys. I work from 730 a.m. until 330 p.m. And then I do this stuff in the evening. So uh, if there is a time that works a little bit better for you, we can make that work. But, um, you know, it's important that you do this okay uh the other thing that you can do is you can send me an email send a picture of your question okay and i will respond with a video okay i can quickly make a video and just send it off to you so respond with a video okay the other thing that you can do, if you want to, you can just send me a video, okay, and telling me where you're having trouble, all right? So, um, you know, a lot of different ways where you can ask questions and get help from me, okay? Uh, one of the things that we got to talk about is where to take exams, okay? You are going to take four total assessments, okay? Four total assessments, all right? Um, two will be take-home exams, okay? Two are take-home and we're going to call those tests. So to take home tests. Okay. And then you will take two proctored exams. And a proctored exam uh, means that you have to go to a CMC location. All right. Let's write this down first. Okay. Um, and, okay, hold on. So two take-home tests, you'll, and those will be scanned in as a PDF. So scanned as whoop, a PDF. Okay. Uh, when you take your proctored exam, this will be done at a CMC testing location. So done at a CMC testing location. All right. Uh, you will have to schedule this. So these are scheduled um, scheduled in advance, and I'll talk more about that. Um, scheduled in advance um, during a certain week, okay, um, during a specific time. All right, so there will be a week where you'll have to take your midterm and your final, and those will have to be done at CMC. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about here is your grading policy. Okay, and your grading policy is as such. You have homework and notes. Okay, you have weekly demonstration of skills. Okay, which I call um, recording yourself. So weekly demonstration of skills okay um, and this is going to be where you record yourself record yourself okay uh, the last thing that we have are tests and exams Okay. Now, within each of these, your homework and your notes accounts for 5% of your grade. This is weighted. Okay. The weekly demonstration of skills when you record yourself is a whopping 35%. Okay. Tests and exams are going to be 65%. Or no, 60%. Sorry. Okay. Now, here's what you need. In order to pass, okay, this is very, very important. So in order to pass the class, all right, you must earn at least a 75%. You must earn at least 75%, okay? So 
you know, I, I, I put the, uh, the, the videos, the weekly demonstration of skills as a very high weight because this is the most important part of the class, okay? It's important, yes, that you do your homework and you do, uh, it should be HW, not HM. Um, homework and notes is important. That's where you do your learning. But this is where you are going to learn the most, okay? And then you have to perform on a test or exam, okay? So that's how the breakdown is going to go. Um, and I just want to make sure that that's clear that you guys understand that, all right? So, um, you know, I, wanna, I want you to take a look at this, all right? I wrote very, very, very small when I wrote these notes down, okay? You will need to write small, okay? Because I write small, all right? Um, but utilize your space. If you need a couple extra pieces of paper, um, all the notes will be provided to you. Um, this is how, you know, my videos typically run. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that I went through, um, you know, not only how to take notes and some strategies for taking notes, but just kind of like how to be a student in this online class, okay? Um, and if you follow these instructions, you will be very successful, okay? And the most important thing, remember, is your time, okay? It's going to take time. So if you're not prepared to spend that kind of time, you know, or any time, all right, then, you know, it's not going to happen, okay? You are in college. You are going to have to do this thing called put in the good old college try, which means you actually just kind of sit down and do the work. So, um, all right, so uh, that's it for this portion of the video. Um, the next part, we're going to go over the syllabus, important dates, and things like that. So, hang okay, uh, here's the syllabus. Uh, I want to. This is for summer 2020. Um, it is your guys's job to make sure that you um, read this and understand it, and make sure that uh, you know we adhere to these policies. So. Um, so basically, you know, what a syllabus is, is, is an agreement between you and, and me. And um, if there's any sort of discrepancy with uh, your grade or anything like that, um, that is addressed in the syllabus. OK, so, um, you know, if it's in the syllabus, those are the rules. OK, um, so just to go through this. All right, so to go through this, um, this first part is just showing you, um, you know, the course and instructor. Uh, this course is online. You are in quantitative liter literacy. Uh, this is Math 050. We are taking this in the summer of 2020. This is a four credit hour class. Okay, uh, the prerequisite to get into this class is an acupuncture score or maybe like an SAT score or something like that. Um, but then this part is really interesting here. Okay, this is called a co-requisite course. Uh, this is AAA095. This is the lab course that is associated with Math 050. Um, you must be enrolled in both courses to get credit for both, okay? Um, you can't just be enrolled in the lab and you can't just be enrolled in Math 050, okay? So um, uh, I'll talk more about, uh, you know, that in other emails and stuff. Okay, the start date uh, is this first week of May 26th. The class ends on August 7th, okay? Um, if you are in this class and you decide to drop the class before uh, June 8th, you can get a refund. And then the last day to get a W on you uh, as a withdraw is uh, the 20th of July. And that information is kind of addressed here. All right, so I'll let you do that. So if you, you know, and what this means is that if you were to drop the class after uh, July 20th uh, or fail, your grade will go in as an F or a fail, okay? And that can really have a negative impact on any financial aid. So if you are receiving financial aid, uh, these dates are, are, are pretty important, okay? Um, if you don't show up within seven days um, of the first class date, um, then I have to do you as a no-show. And what that means is that you'll be dropped from the course, okay? So if you don't come on and complete any um, assignments within the first seven days as the course began, um, then I'll show, I'll, I'll have to put you in as a, uh, as a, uh, as a, as a no-show, um, okay? 
Uh, let's continue on and make sure you read through these. I'm not going to read through this. Um, I leave that up to you. Um, and so just make sure that you, um, understand how all this stuff works. If you have any questions about it, please uh, reach out to me. Okay, on the next page, um, you have your instructor information. So my name is Joseph Police. Um, this is my uh, phone. This is my cell phone that you can reach me at. And so I do, I will be calling you guys um, just to check in, see how you guys are doing, um, you know, see what kind of questions you have if you need any help. Um, and so if you get uh, a call from a 913 number, um, then, and it's from Overland Park, Kansas, uh, then that is a, um, you know, that is me calling you. So, uh, just know that and I'll leave a message if you don't, uh, pick up. So, uh, here's my email address. If you want to, um, you know, reach me via email. And if you want to do office hours, um, you know, we can work virtually. All right. Uh, we can log on to WebEx or a zoom call or do something like that. And, um, you know, you can get one-on-one -on -one help from me, but this is done by appointment only, okay? So I'm usually, you know, because it's a summer course, uh, I'll be around. So, um, you know, usually it'll be pretty easy to get a hold of me. So um, the required course materials, uh, you will need a computer with internet access since this class is online, okay? Uh, you will need a method to record yourself doing math, okay? This would be a camera on a cell phone, webcam on a computer, or a tablet device. Um, you can do math on paper, a whiteboard, or tablet device that you can write on. So that is a part um, of the course um, requirements, is you recording yourself doing math to demonstrate that you understand various math concepts. Um, here's your textbook. Uh, here's your ISBN uh, number. Um, and uh, one thing that's kind of cool is that, you know, you you either get a physical text through the LMP or you can get a digital copy. Um, and so the digital copy is actually just gonna be right there available to you on Canvas. Um, it is the first module that exists. So you can access the book there. Um, make sure that you um, have updated your shipping address um, in the LMP so that the book is uh, sent to you if you are requiring a physical textbook, okay? Um, moving on, uh, you guys can read through, uh, the course description, uh, what, you know, your learning outcomes, competencies, competencies and skills that we're going to do in this class. And then, uh, the topical outline of the things that we will be covering. Okay. I'm not on the next, you know, I'm moving on to the next page. I'm not going to go over this. Uh, these are things that you can read. Um, at the end of the course, you can take a survey of your experience and, uh, you know, let me know how I did and, uh, you know, gladly take any constructive criticism. Um, evaluation methods. This is important. Um, so this is how you get graded. So mastery of the course objectives is the goal of quantitative literacy. All right. Uh, students are expected to complete weekly assignments in the book as well as um, all the assignments on Canvas. Uh, students learn math by doing math. This learning takes place when you are actively watching the videos, taking notes, doing homework, and recording yourself doing math. Okay, so um, on the next page, you have your grade will be determined by the following. So you have homework assignments, um, guided notes, and discussions. These are collected weekly, okay? And that's going to account for 15% of your grade. Um, weekly demonstration of skills, also collected weekly. Uh, that's going to be 25% of your grade. Um, and this is the recording yourself doing math. So it's a pretty big chunk of what you need to do. Um, tests and exams uh, is going to account for 60% of your grade. So that, you know, while you will spend the majority of your time doing this, okay, you got to be able to demonstrate to me via video and on your exams that you can do the material, all right? Uh, the grading scale, um, 90 to 100% is an A, 80 to an 89% is a B, 75 to 79% is a C, okay? And then a 60% to a 74% is a D. Anything below 59% is an F. Now, so I can be clear, in order to pass this course, you must earn a grade of a C, which is a 75% or better. Okay, you will receive a D and a D in, a, in, the, in this uh, Math 050 course 
uh, is not something that will, um, you know, that won't exactly get you to move on. Okay, so got to get a C, 75% or better. All right. Um, I also don't round up. So let's say that you get an 89.98%. Okay, that is going to give you a B. All right. So just so that we're clear, all right, I'm not going to round up. Okay. Um, and I'll explain why that's the case here in this part. All right. So class management, um, I will kind of read through this. Um, and so uh, the written assignment should include your name, the date, and the section number of the, of the activity. These assessments need to be submitted online through Canvas as a scanned PDF or as a picture. Okay. I preferred a scanned PDF. So uh, there are videos that I will uh, post that will show you how to do that using your phone, okay? Um, all of your weekly assignments are due at 11.59 p.m. each Thursday night unless the instructor has indicated otherwise. Work will be accepted late with no penalty. However, this is highly discouraged, okay? So I will take work up until the last day of the course, August 7th. However, if you fall behind, it is very difficult to catch up. OK, um, so that because I let you turn in late work. All right. That's why I adhere to this policy. OK, you can turn in any assignment. You could really get the grade that you guys want to get. But it truly comes down to uh, you uh, just doing the work. OK, uh, attendance <clears throat> in an online class is, extre is extremely important. You are encouraged to spend some time each day working on the class. OK. Um, students should spend, this is recommended, 15 hours per week on this course to ensure success. I can almost guarantee that if you put the time in, 15 hours a week, then um, you will do very well in this class, okay? Um, that, that is just, uh, that's kind of a fact, all right? Uh, students are required, uh, okay, um, okay, students experiencing problems with classwork are responsible for telling the teacher, okay, I can provide you extra practice and help if you need, but you need to be able to, you got to let me know what's going on, okay, um, calculators, uh, use them, um, you know, I, I would say, uh, you know, try and use them to check your work and not to rely on them, um, and your grades uh, will be posted on Canvas, so be sure to check back to Canvas, um, you know, to know how you are doing in the class. All right, uh, how to be successful in the class. I will let you read through this. Um, I'm not going to, um, you know, go there. All I'm going to say is uh, spend time on it, okay? That's going to be your biggest asset to you being successful. Okay, I'll let you guys read through uh, the student consumer information portion of this. Um, and, and these are, you know, your rights and your responsibilities uh, and, you know, notice of non-discrimination. So uh, if you have any questions about this, let me know. Um, you can also contact, um, you know, these people down here um, if you have any issues with anything. Okay, so... Uh, please feel free to, you know, make sure you click on those links, know what those are talking about. And if you have questions, let me know. Okay. Um, I do want to talk about the course schedule. Okay. Um, what you can see here is that um, this class is 11 weeks long. Okay. Starting on the week of May 26th. Um, the sections that are covered are in here. All right. And so notice that the first week you have five major things to get through. OK, we are covering a lot of material in a very short amount of time. Thus, my my very, very, uh, you know, uh, in, in stressing the importance of spending time on this this will take you a decent amount of time. The syllabus orientation uh, that you're, this is what you're currently watching. Um, this is really important that you understand how to be a student in this class. Um, and this will take a, a decent amount of time to get through, okay? Um, doing the homework, doing uh, 
taking the notes, watching the videos, doing the homework, doing the recordings. This is all going to take time. So the, the, the more time that you spend on it up front, understanding the work that is required is really important for your success, okay? Um, and all these assignments are due on the second day of the week, or on the Thursday of the week, which in this case, during week one, that's going to be May 28th, okay? Now, if you don't get these things into me on that day, that's okay, but you want to make sure that you're trying to get them in on Friday or Saturday or something like that, because then the following week, you have four more sections to get through, okay? And that's due on June 4th, all right? Um, here are the, uh, the homework assignments. These are also located in your notes um, at the bottom in the back section of each notes, okay? So if you have questions on what you're supposed to be doing, please, please, please reach out and, and, and let me know, okay? Okay, so to continue through this, um, notice that each of these are done you know, you've got about four sections a week. This section, this week here, week number five is a very, very busy week, okay? Uh, during that week, not only are you taking a take-home test, uh, but you have to cover six sections. Now, these sections kind of run, they run pretty quickly, um, but I have, you know, we've, we've got 11 weeks, guys. I, we got to squeeze it in, okay? You, again, you know, I encourage you to, you know, work ahead, and, and try and get these things done in a timely manner because looking ahead at your semester, you've got a lot of things that are due each and every week, okay? Now, um, just so you know, uh, these, and all this information is also found in Canvas, okay? The due dates and specific due dates and what exactly you need to do are found in, in Canvas. Uh, but the first test is a take-home test. Your midterm is, is an exam that will be found on Canvas. It'll be through Canvas that you'll take that. Uh, test one and test three are going to be paper tests that you would print out and send back to me. Um, and then your final exam and your midterm are both taken on Canvas, okay? Um, you know, each of these, we, we just got a lot of work to do, okay? And so I, you know, sometimes I've taught this class in, in 16 weeks, uh, in like a fall semester or a spring semester. And, um, you know, we're able to do like three sections a week. But anytime you take a, a summer course, you're going to have to rifle through a lot of this information, um, you know, in a very quick amount of time. So there's really no way in changing that. Um, that's just how the summer semester works out. Okay, so this is all the things that we will be covering. Um, but make sure you check... Uh, uh, canvas for discussions and, and, and things like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, on the last page, uh, we talk about CMC libraries. You guys have access to the library uh, through Canvas. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, and so, you know, librarians are here to help you. I don't know how much you'll need from the library from my class, but, you know, those things exist. Okay. If you need tutoring, okay, and remember, I can help you, all right, even though I've, you know, everything you learn is from video, we don't really meet for any classes, there are tutors, okay, if you, if you want to work with somebody else, you are more than welcome to do that, um, if you want to work with me, we just need to set up a time and, and agree to work at a certain time, okay, uh, if you have any technical issues, anything with Canvas, your computer, anything like that, make sure that you are calling uh, the, the service desk, um, and you know, they have hours of operation, um, you know, and so make sure that you, you know, use that and, and try to try to make sure that you can, you know, use that. All right. So if you have any questions or comments without, with online learning, I know that this might be a unique experience for you. Um, I, you know, I've been doing online learning for a while guys. And, uh, you know, as long as you are diligent and, and you spend time on it every single day, and you keep up with the due dates and you keep up with the work, you'll be fine. And I really hope that you, you know, enjoy the format of this class. All right, let's go back to the video. All right, so on this part, I want to talk about how to take notes and turn them in. So one of the hard things about an online class is my ability to check your work, uh, to check to see if you've done it, if you've done what I've asked you to do. Um, and so what we have to do is we have to do this, turn things in digitally. All right, so the first things first, what I want you to do um, is, you know, have your computer open and have your notes out, 
okay? And then whenever I write on the computer, then you write out on your notes. Okay, when you're done with that, when you've watched the video and you've taken all the notes, what I want you to do is then take a picture of your notes, okay? And, and put a smile on your face because we're having fun when we do this. Um, but, you know, when you, when you have this, um, you know, you can either take a picture um, of the actual notes themselves or you can, and, but, you know, the difference is, is that, you know, you get kind of this, all this extra stuff on the sides and all that. So what you could do is scan it in with your phone, okay? And there's an app for that. And that app is called the, Sti the Tiny Scanner uh, PDF Scanner. So what you would do, you know, what it does is it takes the camera on your phone and it turns it into a PDF scanner. So what I would want you to do, if you, if you do the PDF scanner, you'll create a document um, that is, you know, your notes, okay? So you would have a document that does this. Um, or what you can do is you can do, um, you know, take the photo and paste it into a Word document. and then save as a PDF, okay? And you can do that too. Um, it kinda, I, I, I would prefer you to do it as a PDF. In any case, I want you to turn in PDFs, okay? Um, but if you do, uh, you know, I would prefer if you guys scan them in as a PDF before you do anything, um, but that's kind of my preference. Um, but if you want to take a photo and put it and paste it into a Word document, you can do that too. Okay, now what I mean by that is take a photo. You may want to email it to yourself and then put it into a Word document, save it as a PDF. And then, you know, the cool thing is, guys, is that not only do you have like a, a, a physical copy of this, but you have a digital copy as well, okay? And a part of this, um, you know, to practice this, to turn it in, um, I actually want you to do the same thing with the notes from your orientation, okay? So right now, what I would like you to do is to practice this by, um, by physically taking and, and, and doing this, uh, taking a scanner, scanning in a photo, um, and putting it into a PDF, and then turning it in on Canvas, okay? So you turn them in on Canvas, and it'll be the assignment. So there's instructions on that uh, page on Canvas that tells you what to do, okay? So now let's talk about uh, doing homework. Okay, on this part, uh, how to do homework and turn it in, um, I, you'll turn it in the same way, so you'll turn it in the same way as you would note. So turn it in, um, and that's gonna be the same way as notes, okay? And you've had practice on doing that, um, you know, on Canvas. But I want you to take a look at this picture, okay? When you're doing homework, there's a couple of things I want you to consider here, okay? Number one is that your notes are out, okay? So here, what I want you to see here is that you have your notes are out, okay? And you also have the video, out, okay? And so what happens is, is that as you're going through problems, what you should do is you should look at your notes and say, okay, if I'm trying to do this problem, what did I do in my notes? Now, if you go into your notes and you say, okay, wait a second, this doesn't make any sense, you should go back to the video and rewatch the video. What did we do in the video that helped us do the problem in the notes? And then how could we apply that to do it on, from the book? Okay, and then you would do your homework on a piece of paper, okay? And what I'd want you to then do is turn it in the same way as you would the notes, okay? Um, and then I'll grade it, you know, accordingly. So, but that's the idea. Okay, now the other thing is, is that you can also use, okay, use the homework solutions, okay? Use the solutions to help you understand how I got the answer. So use it to understand. So use it to understand, okay, and not to copy. 
Okay, and so we've already kind of you know talked about all that kind of stuff, and you can access the homework solutions um, on Canvas. Okay, those will be available to you on Canvas as well. All right, so um, you know that about does it for for homework. Okay, and if you've got questions, you know, get a hold of me, please. All right, and that's all I have for that. Okay. Okay, the last little part I want to talk about is recording yourself. Now, what I do is I use a tablet. I use an iPad uh, with a stylus to do this. Um, to get the sound right, what I do is I use uh, the headphones um, because on the Apple headphones, you have a microphone right here, and so you always consistently get good sound from that. So this is one option, okay? But there is also another option, and the other option is using Canvas, okay? So using Canvas. And this is kind of the preferred option. Um, this is the cheaper option, obviously, as well. So using Canvas, um, I want, you'll need to go out and get a small whiteboard, OK? Um, and the whiteboards, I've looked on Amazon. Um, the small whiteboard is around like $8, OK? Um, you'll want to get some whiteboard markers as well. So whiteboard markers. Uh, and those are a little expensive, too, but um, you know, you can get those at any, you know, Target, Walmart, whatever. And you can also get a small whiteboard at those same places too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to actually do that um, on Canvas um, and, uh, and how to record yourself doing math on Canvas using the whiteboard. Okay, so... Um, what I want you to do uh, for this next part, um, you know, is actually use the camera that's on your computer. Okay, so um, you know, use the little camera that's right there, and um, and what you'll do is you'll then bring up your uh, whiteboard here. Isn't this fun? Mine's really big. Yours probably wouldn't be so big, but then what I want you to do is come in here and say, okay. What is, you know, 7 plus 3, okay? I know that 7 plus 3 is equal to 10, and you would make a video explaining that, kind of like what I do, all right? So that's the idea of what I want you to do. Now, on Canvas, there will actually be a portion uh, where you can, there are, the assignment will be for you to actually record yourself doing it, okay? And, and you'll see that on one of them. So on the, on the assignment for the orientation video, uh, what I want you guys to do is to actually just record yourself talking and introduce yourself to me and, um, you know, I'll give you points for that. So that's kind of the idea. So make sure you go out and get a whiteboard, get a couple whiteboard markers. Um, this one, I think, shows up backwards for some reason. Um, yours probably wouldn't do that. If it does, then we'll deal with that and go from there. Um, but, yeah, pretty much it. So... I uh, hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you in a bit. Thanks. All right. So if you're going to record yourself, uh, you know, using your phone to do this, what I would recommend doing is taking your phone, holding it up, and then, you know, writing underneath. Okay. And that might be a little bit weird for you, but that might, you know, be a tactic that you can utilize. Okay, when you do that, you know, you're just going to hover your phone over and, you know, just start writing. It is a little weird because you can't really see what you're doing. Uh, you may have to, like, tilt your head over to the right so, you, so that you can write better. All right, and then kind of follow your phone along to show that you can write. So that's probably one of the easiest ways to do this. Um, but, you know, just trying to give you guys as many options as possible to make your videos. Okay, so once you guys have recorded your video and you have that done, uh, go ahead and hit the export button, which is in the bottom left. Um, and what you'll notice is, you know, I have this video that I just did, and that's the one that's selected. Um, right below that, you can see this thing called AirDrop. So if you have an iPhone and you have a Mac, um, you can send files between those devices using AirDrop. So if I automatically just click on my Mac, um, it'll send this over to my Mac. It might take a minute because um, it's a video and it takes a minute to do a video. Uh, but what it will do is that will then be downloaded by my computer and I'll have that video on my computer. 
Um, the other thing that you can do is, and I'm just going to go ahead and decline it because I don't need it. Um, I will, I will in a minute. I'll need this video. So the video of the video, okay, incepted videos, okay. Um, but you can also email it. Um, you could maybe do, you know, however you want to do it, iCloud photo sharing, send it to yourself via text um, or Google Drive or whatever uh, you want to do. Um, there might be some more options here. Uh, it just kind of depends on what you have on your phone. So um, email works. Um, we'll talk about YouTube if we want to go down that road. Um, but I would prefer not. Um, I prefer all these to be uploaded into Canvas. And not. All right, so while we're on the concept of talking about recording yourself, I, I want to make a couple of quick notes. Um, and, the, and the first thing is that your files, when you do upload these videos, can be no, lar no longer larger uh, than 5 megabits, okay? Um, but the cool thing is that you can upload as many videos you want into that assignment, but each video can't exceed five megabits. So you may, you know, have this issue where, where you've got too many, you know, your video is too long, you can cut it up, okay? Um, and the other important thing is I must see you writing and hear your voice. I know I've talked about that, but it's so important. Uh, what I had in the past is that people, you know, it'd be like this, a webcam on their face, and they'd be writing, and then I wouldn't be able to uh, see what they were writing when they were like this, and then they just show it, okay? I can't have that anymore. we got to figure something out where we can, uh, I need to hear your voice and see what you're writing as you're talking, okay? Uh, I think the best bet is to take your phone, hold it above your paper, and record that way, okay? So it's important that we uh, give that a shot. I think that's probably the easiest way. Um, and, you know, transferring those files you know, those can be done over email, Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, AirDrop if you're using a Mac and, a, and an iPhone, um, those kinds of things. So, uh, you know, that's something that you're going to have to spend some time with trying to figure out what's going to work best for you, okay? And I uh, want to make sure that you guys are, uh, you, know, um, you know, ready and capable to do that and that we, this runs smoothly, okay? So that's all. Awesome. All right, so I know I just said how I don't want you guys to upload videos to YouTube. However, an option available to you is to upload your videos to YouTube. Um, you can do the, uh, you know, this a number of ways. You can do it through your phone. You can do it through your computer. But what I want you to know is that you have a Google account with your CMC account. So the same way that you sign in to your CMC account also provides you with a Google account. Because Google owns YouTube, you also have a free YouTube account, okay? And the cool thing about that is that these videos can be as long as you want, okay? You're not restricted to size. And then in order to submit, okay, you will submit a link into Canvas, okay? And you can do that, uh, but you can also just directly... Um, you know, submit these videos into Canvas, however you want to do it. I find that this is a lot easier to do um, than, than submitting them on Canvas, but it all just depends on what, you're, on what you want to do. So, all right, next part. That's all I got for this part. Okay, real quick, I want to talk to you guys uh, about some of my expectations uh, for Math 055. Um, because you're in Math 055, what that means is that you have shown us that you know all the most, if not all, of the concepts from Math 050. Okay, so you are responsible for all prior knowledge like operating with fractions. Now, I will help you with this, but it's also something you can't have that excuse and say, oh, I don't know how to do that, therefore I can't do this problem, okay? So you need to make sure that you remember how to do those types of things. I will help you through that process. Um, you know, come to office hours and utilize, you know, uh, the resources available to you, okay? Um, the other thing I want to talk about is that not every homework problem will match the problem in the notes, okay? So you might encounter a homework problem that's like, ugh, this one might be kind of hard, okay? And you may not have an example like that. I will do my best to make sure that... I have made extra videos for you 
to help you with those types of problems, okay? So um, if you want me to make a couple of more videos, uh, you know, just let me know, okay? The other thing is, is that office hours and homework uh, should be solutions are your friends. Use them as resources, okay? So use the solutions, use office hours to try and figure things out, uh, to try and help you, uh, you know, learn things you may not be comfortable with, okay? So it's really important that you utilize those resources, okay? Especially homework solutions. Use those to help figure out how to do problems, okay? So, um, yeah, just wanted to go over some of those expectations with you. All right, so just to wrap this up, guys, uh, I want to just, you know, talk about a couple things. Uh, I know this is a lot of information in this video, but I, the first thing I want you to understand is that I want you to believe in yourself, okay? This class is going to be hard, all right? It's going to require a lot of time. It's going to require a lot of effort, but you can do it. You have to believe in yourself. That's the first thing, and I believe in every single one of you, and I know that you can do well in this class, okay? Now, uh, just to close up, um, you know, want to talk about a couple things. Uh, first things first, uh, communication. I will be sending out a weekly email, uh, an announcement to you guys um, with regards to things that are going on. Uh, you can expect that usually over the weekend on Sundays. Um, and that'll be an announcement on Canvas, and it'll also be, um, you know, sent to your email, okay? Okay. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is that, you know, this might be a very brand new way for you to learn math, and that's okay, but I want you to believe in this process. I know it works. I think this is probably one of the best ways for you to, to learn math, um, but it's going to require effort on your part, okay? It's going to require you to be an active learner versus a passive learner, okay? And that's really cool, all right? Not many classes can say that. Um, the last thing I'm going to say is success in this class is determined by hard work and time. Remember, guys, 10 to 15 hours per week. Okay? That's recommended. If you can do that, you're going to do great. All right? You got to make time for this. All right? So, you know, guys, let me know if you have any questions. Um, that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you soon. I can't wait to work with you.